Deputy Sullivan. Okay, right. Thanks, Ms. Cowherley. Um, we have two very good documents um, in our state. One is the Proclamation of the Republic and the other is our Constitution. And both of them guarantee equality. And we often bring out the principle from the Proclamation of cherishing the children of the nation equally. And we seem to be committed to equality and the principle of equality and treating people, people equally. But the reality is that we're not equal. And children born with special needs are not equal with other children who don't have those special needs. So children with special needs have to be treated differently so that they can reach some level of equality with children who don't have the special needs and all their parents are saying is give our children a level playing field. So in order to ensure that level playing field there has to be active positive discrimination in favour of children with special needs. Is Kus Ahish Dum Larcher and Villisha, a Capum Gulshi Salair, Gan Uber Chakdal of Finian McGrath, Nok Mayakum Villa Osar Kor and you. I want to acknowledge the work of Deputy McGrath, not just on this one piece of legislation on special needs, but on his dedicated and his long campaign as a parent, as a teacher, as a principal and as a TD on the whole area of special needs education. It was very disappointing. He invited us in the technical group to join him on the plinth back in the summer when he was launching this bill and the press were invited and many of the press turned up none and that just shows the interest in the media in children with special needs the crux the central point is that because down syndrome is not listed as a complex low incidence disorder some children with down syndrome <clears throat> are not entitled to resource hours and because of that classification of Down syndrome, and for some, as a mild learning disability, some children are not getting the extra hours that they need. The cuts have been harsh, added to that as well. So at times of financial pressure and constraint, why is it that the needy and the vulnerable have to suffer? Now I think this bill will give children with special needs the resources that they need to get on the level playing field. Now I speak from a long experience of teaching in a school that had a very open admissions policy and was very inclusive of children with special needs. So I know from that experience the difference that the extra hours and the resources make and did make to children with special needs. And it was great and we all got so much joy as we're seeing those children with special needs, children with Down syndrome, achieving their junior cert and going on further. Some general points. It's a very complicated system for mainstream schools who have children with special needs. Even though the National Council for Special Education has given some clarity and uh, clearance on the eligibility but with the CNOs. But I want to acknowledge the work of principals who have to do an awful lot of juggling with the various allocations that they're given. So they have hours for special needs assistance, they have learning support and they have resource teaching. Now, the SNAs are supposed to look after the care needs of a child, hanging up the coat, going to the toilet, getting the books ready. But I know uh, special needs assistants go further than that, and they get into helping with homework and with the classwork. And I think we're missing out on an awful lot of potential from SNAs when we don't give them look at their role further. We have the PLCs in the care of the special child, they're getting FETAC and other qualifications, and I do think we could look at that role. Now, a student can have teaching support support but not SNA support because the rules for SNA, extensive care needs and issues where they would be a danger to themselves or others. But there are children with needs not in those categories who could really benefit from an SNA. Learning support is based on the number of children enrolled, the general allocations. I feel that should be based on the needs of the individual child and not on numbers in a school. And then it comes to resource teaching. So it's very problematic for schools when it comes to ensuring that each individual student receives allocated support. And that's due to the logistical and financial constraints that the schools face. For example, a, stu a student could be awarded five hours weekly tuition but the wherewithal to deliver that on an individual basis may not really be possible. So team teaching or group resource teaching may be used, but then there will be other issues there. There are difficulties for mainstream schools, including children with special needs. You take a mainstream school, I could have 25 students, I'm teaching a curriculum, I'm teaching teenagers, they all have varying social and behavioural needs, and including special needs students without the resources. It's a disservice and it's detrimental to all of those students. The term educational apartheid has been used and I want to make this point here that some schools were very successful in including children with special needs then get this name and other schools are opting out of that responsibility and I do think, I hope the working group, group is going to look at this. Down Syndrome Ireland tell us that the cost of including Down Syndrome on the low incidence list is less than one million. 
It's a paltry amount. But I want to just make that point there that we need a simpler and more straightforward system to ensure that children with special needs of whatever type are adequately served by our system. I hope the working group will tackle that and we get that system.